All right, welcome back. So what we're gonna take a look at today is just a really simple project on how to use blending modes. This is for an upcoming project in which we use blending modes to blend multiple images together in class. So there's a couple of things that can be difficult as you're starting out. One is where the mask is applied, how to use the mask, how to move the mask. And so this is gonna cover all this. Is this some dynamic image? No, these are just three random images that I picked out. So what we will do here, and I'm gonna also, along with this video on my webpage, put a PDF of the process that I'm gonna be using here today. So if that is helpful for you to understand the steps. So if that interests you, I will have that link in the description. The first thing that we're gonna do when we're gonna be using this image, this image, and this image in this, and I have them all located in a folder, but instead of individually adding and stacking these on top of each other, we can automate this process. So what we're gonna do is go up to File, Scripts, Load Files into a Stack, and that's exactly what it says. You pick the photos that you want, and Photoshop will load them one on top of each other, as different layers into one file. So we'll hit browse, we'll go to the images, I'll just hit Command A, Control A on a PC, and hit open, and you'll see what it will do here. We don't need to align them because they're all different, so that's not gonna be helpful, and we're not gonna use them as a smart object. So we're gonna hit OK, and it will go through. I have sized these all at 3,000 pixels so that they do line up a little bit better. But now you can see we've got all those images loaded up together. Now, what I wanna do is I actually wanna change this order a little bit because this is the order that I'm gonna be using them in. And I'm gonna turn that top one off just cause we don't need to see it. So the first thing that we need to do is I actually wanna take those trees and put that just in the background. So if I wanna put it just in the background, we need to make a selection of our subject and then we're gonna inverse that selection so it selects the background. And we could do it with this image off or this image on, as long as the face layer that we see over here is the selected layer, it doesn't matter if this layer is up or on. I'll turn it off just because I think it will make it easier and you can see what's happening. So we are going to go to Select and Mask. And there's a couple different ways. This is just a simple way where it does everything once. So we'll hit select subject, it's gonna select the subject. We can hit refine here if they had difficult hair, so it makes a better selection. And then we'll come on over here. We don't wanna output this one as a new layer with a mask, I just wanna output this as a selection. And you'll see why. So we're gonna hit, say selection, hit okay, and we've got our selection. And this is the trick. We don't actually want the mask face layer, we want it on the layer above it. So I'm gonna turn the tree layer on. And remember, we want the trees here. So what I'm gonna do is hit Command Shift I or Control Shift I on a PC, and that's going to inverse the selection, means select the opposite. So then we can simply come over here and put a mask on that, and boom, just like that. Wherever we see white is where it's going to show the trees, and where it's black, it's not gonna show. So that's how we got the trees in the background. And I could control this if I wanted to lower the opacity of the trees so it's softer and we get some of that color. I think I actually will. I like the way that looks better. We can simply lower that down. It doesn't look like this image fits perfect. Looks like we got a little weird line right here. So we will have to come in there and crop that. But that's step one. That's a really easy thing to do. We just put those trees in the background. Now the next thing that we're going to do, we're going to use this same mask. This is why this process is so easy. We're going to turn this layer on. And in this case, I want to put these trees on the subject's face. Well, we've already made the mask the subject. So this is really easy. I'm going to hold my Alt or Option key. It's Option on a Mac, Alt on a PC and I'm going to left click and hold and then drag the mask up. This will duplicate the mask. If you didn't hold the Alt or Option, it would just move it. But this is replacing or duplicating that mask. Okay, now the issue here is, because it's the same mask, it's putting the trees in the background, which is not what we want. 
we want our subject to be the white part and the background to be the black part. So we can simply hit Command I, which is invert. Now we need to make sure that this mask is selected and hit that key and then boom, it puts the trees right in there over our subject, which is exactly what we wanted. But it doesn't look good because we want only a certain area. And this is where the blending modes in Photoshop really shine. Because I selected an image and I did this on purpose with high contrast where there's basically white and black in the image and that's it. It makes it really easy to blend these into the layer below because we can use a blending mode that's just going to pick the dark areas and drop the light areas. So we'll come down, that's multiply. And what multiply says is if the top layer, meaning the trees is darker than the bottom layer, which is pretty much everywhere because they're black, we're gonna drop the white and just put the black and we're gonna use those black pixels. And so you can see we're overlaying it. And if you don't know what these different modes do, you can easily hover over them and to see which ones you like. If you go into lighten or screen, it's gonna basically do the opposite. But in this case, we're just gonna use this multiply blending mode. So now we've got those trees. Now, if you wanna move the object around, like we've got these trees, but maybe we don't like how the trees are laying on our subject, it's really easy. We can grab the move tool, but if you notice right up here, there's a little link. If we don't uncheck that link and we move it, it moves both the mask and the photo at the same time, which is not what you want. You wanna move just the image, not the mask. So we move the image around inside that mask. We unlink that. And then you can see we can move this around and control how this interacts with our subject. So let's say that's how we wanted to have our image. I don't know if that's how we wanted it. Does it make a difference? We have one issue. It's we want it over the subject skin and face, but maybe we don't want it over the clothes here. So we're gonna remove it from that part. And everybody should know how do you remove something? You're gonna apply black to the mask. First thing we need to do is go over here to this layer and our mask is not selected. We're on the image layer still. So we're gonna select that mask layer. I'm gonna grab my brush, make the foreground color black. And then we can simply paint black, move our flow up to 100% and we can paint black. And all that's gonna do is take that out. Now I'm gonna make my brush smaller and harder so I get a more exact effect here. It's a little bit hard with that secondary orange thing in the way. And then we'll just come in here and get the rest of that it all up. Just like that, we've removed it from that area. So now that we have our image on our subject, and there's more that you could obviously do to this. And as you can see, it's actually really easy to take multiple layers, put them together, use a few masks that you can duplicate in a blending mode and voila, just like that, you've easily blended images together. Now, the key to this is using the right images and understanding how the blending modes work makes the process easier. Well, if you found this video helpful, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. If you have any comments or questions, you can always add those below and don't forget to subscribe.